Corporate sourcing is indeed uh, a growing trend and uh, very interesting. Um, it's interesting for countries because they can easily uh, scale up the deployment of renewables. Uh, they can tap into the good balance sheets of uh, corporates. Uh, so the 75 countries that we have listed in our report, they have some form of policy that uh, enables uh, and uh, facilitates corporate sourcing. Um, of course, uh, we've seen a growing number of these countries. It started off in Europe, North America, and now it's spreading worldwide uh, into Asia, uh, Latin America, and even Northern Africa. Well, I mean, we surveyed in our uh, report 2,400 uh, companies and uh, we had many companies that were actually active, uh, actively sourcing uh, renewable energy, but only a few of them uh, had uh, targets. So 17% of the companies have actual renewable energy targets and we believe many more can do that. Uh, many more can be ambitious in, in moving uh, more forcefully into renewables and uh, benefit from that. Uh, we are offering them the um, technical analysis um, that uh, shows to them how uh, renewables can be of uh, benefit to their corporate uh, objectives. Uh, and uh, we are working with governments to put in place then the legal uh, and regulatory frameworks that are required uh, for that to happen uh, more effectively. We have a very complex um, systems in place for uh, project finance for solar PV, uh, which is in contrast to a technology that's actually fairly simple and uh, standardized. Uh, we've got solar PV panels that need to be uh, plugged in, integrated into a system and uh, then can be operated. So what we believe uh, can reduce trans transaction costs is uh, to have uh, simplified uh, um, processes, simplified contracts um, that are um, uh, standardized across different uh, countries. And that will then also help to um, increase scale because they can much more easily be bundled because they will form part of the same asset class that uh, can then help uh, to bring in uh, large scale investors and again uh, bring in some of the low cost finance uh, that is not reaching all countries uh, at the moment. I think the solar industry has uh, still a huge potential to reach greater scale. Um, we have seen uh, uh, enormous growth over the last decade, uh, but it has been uh, limited to several markets. Uh, so we've seen initially growth in, in Europe and uh, North America. We've more recently seen growth in some of the large emerging economies and we still have uh, a, a huge potential to go into smaller developing countries uh, and uh, scale up uh, in, in, uh, um, in a much bigger way. I mean, since you asked also about the challenges um, um, there, uh, we've seen that system integration is uh, becoming increasingly uh, a challenge when uh, solar PV reaches um, higher shares uh, and we, I'm, I was quite uh, pleased actually here uh, at the InterSolar to see an increasing number of uh, industry players offer integrated uh, solutions where solar PV is part of a system, um, solar PV actually um, is used uh, beyond uh, pure uh, electricity 
and uh, linked to um, heat, uh, linked to transport. Uh, E-mobility, of course, is, is an important feature in, in that regard. So those are the opportunities uh, and system integration to make it possible are the challenges. It will be uh, continued growth, uh, so uh, uh, I hope in the next three to five years it will be a, a very rapid growth. Certainly in the next uh, 10 to 20 years it will be rapid growth. Uh, three to five years we will see a, a much larger uh, role for uh, storage, uh, battery storage that will help the system integration and again uh, benefit um, the growth uh, of, of solar PV. Um, we will see more integrated, uh, more and more integrated solutions that uh, couple different uh, energy sectors and link the power sector to transport uh, and heat.